Right then, I think we're recording. So um, let's quickly do some introductions then. So um, hello everyone, my name is Mark and I'm co-founder of Caviar and Chips. I am Mike, uh, head chef for Caviar and Chips. Brilliant, nice to see you Mike. How are you mate? Good mate, you? All good, thank you. So um, today we're having a little bit of a QA and a around canapes. Um, possibly the most playful and creative part of any menu, eh? Love a canapé. Love a canapé. Mini Doesn't. food. Um, and lots of it. So um, we did a blog last week, didn't we? And um, you did a blog around, I think it was like 20 different ideas that you could have for your canapés. Um, and of course, there's hundreds, as we've talked hundreds. about before. And so it was quite hard to get it down to 20, wasn't it? Very, um, very difficult. And I think you did it. You did it really nicely because you covered um, canapes from around the world, picked out different countries, um, and then you did canapes from the Mediterranean, and then we talked about some crowd pleasers as well. It's kind of like canapes that everyone's going to love. Um, so you should check out that blog, um, which is on our website. But on the back of that, um, as is often the case, when we're chatting to um, people about their menus, as we have been doing this last week, um, we get lots of questions on the back of those blogs. And so um, we've got five or six questions today, um, just from couples who have been planning their wedding. And we've got a mixture of weddings here from winter uh, this year through to summer next year, uh, where people have asked a few different questions. So we're gonna have a little bit of a deep dive into <clears throat> the world of canapes, if that's all right, Mike. Sounds good to me. Yeah, cool. Um, so shall we make a start then? So um, yeah. the first question I have then is from, Isabel. Um, and so Isabel is planning her wedding uh, for summer next year and she's in a marquee. And Isabel says that um, she's been to quite a few different weddings and events and maybe like corporate type events where um, canapes come out and they're not that filling or substantial and tends to be cracker with a bit of tomato on top. Doesn't sound like any canapes that we do, um, no, which is relieving. But that said, what would you suggest could be some substantial kind of canapes? Maybe, I don't know if it's breaking the rules of going two biters, but some that are a little bit more filling, uh, if you've got any ideas there, mate. So really, obviously, like you said, canapes are, are supposed to be like a one biter. Um, so obviously the easiest option is just have more, right? And then you're good to go. Um, but so what you're looking at uh, using is <clears throat> stuff that is filling anyway. Um, therefore, it's going to be more substantial when you're having it in a small amount. For example, uh, wild mushroom arancini with truffle oil and parmesan. You've got the risotto rice that are inside the arancini, so they get already quite filling. Um, and plus, like the truffle oil, the parmesan, the really intense wild mushroom, like it's it's rich and it's big and it's bold. Um, and that is gonna that is gonna be much more substantial in terms of the amount sort of the, the heaviness of what you're eating, sorry, and the flavor power, <laughs> the flavor power, that's <laughs> wow. um, you know, rather than, than something small, like, like you say, like a little tomato with a cracker. Um, fish tacos are a good one because there's only a certain, they're, they're a two biter, let's be honest. Um, you don't want to go too small or you can't get anything in. Um, so I do a little, um, you can do anything really easily, stick to white fish and marinade and some lime, and some chili and some garlic. Um, and some spices and then like maybe some like a little green chili mayo some shredded vegetables um that's a that's a nice uh, nice substantial one yeah. um scotch eggs are a winner so generally a scotch quail egg for a canapé you can have them whole you can have them in half usually we cut ours in half so you've got that nice runny yolk in the middle a little bit of seasoning um but again the the you know 90 percent of the form of that is is meat and sausage meat and stuff like that mm. so it, it will be substantial um looking at uh something like a cod and spring onion fish cake the little red pepper salsa is always a nice one it's light it's summery it's fresh that salsa is really zingy um but again you've got you've got something that's slightly uh, more filling with with the potato and the fish that's running through that fish cake um veggie stuff uh sweet corn fritters i quite like because mm, the yeah, way yeah. we do them is almost like a beignet batter so it's almost like a sweet corn batter, essentially, that we then deep fry. Um, it, it, it's not too light. It's light in flavor, um, but it'll, it'll help fill you up. Uh, and a lot of vegetarian stuff is where you, you come a cropper uh, with some like, sort of substance of canapes because 
there's there's not that heaviness and that richness of, of a meat for example no. um we serve that with a little sweet chili load of spring onion load of chili just pound it up fresh in a bowl so it's like a paste it's glorious it's hot it's sour it's sweet great um and then i was thinking a little mini chicken parmigiana i've written on a couple of menus recently um you know you you can do that as a one bite if you want to but it's got a little tomato well a fairly reduced tomato sauce on top and it's got cheese melted over the top of that as well they're a brilliant little sort of mini food um and uh and yeah they're, they're i mean i definitely tuck into a few of those myself to be honest nice well, that's a good selection that mike I and mean, you've covered all the bases there as well with like you've got meat fish vegetarian ones um so it goes to show i can think that you've got a really good selection of uh canapes that could be made more substantial or at least it could be filling as well um so that's really good thank you so i hope that helps as well um so then uh got chris and uh chris is getting married uh next may um and he was thinking about he didn't want necessarily like certainly like may that we're in now it's quite warm um and so he was thinking about well, what can a Kind of cold canapes could they have that again isn't just like some leaves and a bit of salad and stuff like that but is it interesting and and enjoyable for people so do you have any suggestions for some cold canapes for chris uh, i do i mean personally i think when when you're putting canapes selections together you do want that mix of of hot and cold um you know and and you don't want to end up with just loads and loads of deep fried stuff i mean mm. don't get me wrong some beautiful stuff but you don't want just wave after wave of beige thing coming out and some hot um, so top of my list is my, uh, let's say recent newfound favorite of the last few months, which is a panzanella bruschetta. Mm. So a lot of you might've had bruschettas before, like a little, uh, a little bread croup with some, usually like a tomato basil mix, almost like a salsa on top. Um, this is, uh, my take on a panzanella salad, which is one of my favorites from Italy, which is immense. Yeah. Um, so the bread element there is uh, a croup, which I've just I rub with a little bit of raw garlic as it comes out of the oven hot. So the garlic infuses into that, okay. um, and then we do like heirloom heritage tomatoes, um, a tiny little bit of red onion, um, like basil, touch of oregano, and just marinate them up with some red wine vinegar, salt, pepper. Just let those juices start to come together ah oh, they're just it's fresh it's vibrant it's just great and it will yeah. trump tomato and basil bruschetta any day of the week Sounds, look there's loads going on and it looks it's just more organic <laughs> as well um steak tartare absolute winner um you know we've we've done a lot of those a lot of those um tend to use uh, a bavette actually rather than a fillet which is is typical the bavette is incredibly lean um yeah. which is what you want and uh but it's really really it's a really really um highly worked muscle so it's got a lot of texture and a lot of flavor to it um so we kind of scrape that into really little flecks as opposed to just chopping around the bits of it um and mix that through a little touch of, uh, of whole grain mustard um and some seasoning you want to leave it pretty like pretty bare uh so a bit touch of parsley through there if you overdo it in the mix with different flavors and what have you then you just lose the flavor of the beef and that's the entire point yeah. um uh, on a little croup, so you've got some texture, maybe a little bit of Bernays, just thickened and just over the top would be would be nice. Bernays and steak, obviously, classic combination. That's an arrogant hit coming through. Um, uh, a, a, a brand new one that I wrote this week uh, is a salmon and beetroot tartare with an Aperol jelly. Wow. So uh, it's, it's nice. You want it chilled. Um, yeah. So salmon sort of diced up with beetroot of the same size. Um, so you've got different textures, but not, not due to the, the size of the pieces that you're eating. Um, and then Aperol, you know, people will know from an Aperol yeah. spritz, uh, just turn to a jelly and you get that, that sort of fruity hit that works with the beetroot and works with the salmon and, and really gives it a lift. That sounds cool. I'm excited, like to, uh, excited to go with that. Yeah, that's a really cool one. And actually, you know, you saying that, leads me straight on to the next question where um, Joe, he's getting married May again next year. And he was saying that um, he just wants something a little bit quirky, but different, something that people might go, what the hell is this? And you know, your Aperol jelly sounds exactly like that. So do you have any other examples that, um, that uh, you might be able to have that can like, just like might capture people 
and they might wonder what there is that they're eating. Yeah, I mean, what the hell's this? Is uh, is my speciality? <laughs> <That's> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so usually, what you want to do um, with these is you don't want to scare people. No, uh, you want to show things that they may have not in a way they may not have seen before. But you know, you're not just suddenly going to go, "Oh, someone wants something a bit quirky, so I'm going to do tin tuna with rhubarb," and you know, and you know, it just. There's no point. It's got to be a banger. There's no yeah. point just making some random thing up. Yeah. Um, so I've got a few ideas. Uh, firstly, crab donut. Right. <laughs> not. It's not. It's not. You know, I'm not the first person ever to to go with a crab donut. It's it's been around, but not too mainstream. Okay. Um, use brown crab meat in the donut. That's where the flavour comes from. But yeah. texture wise, you want the white crab meat. So what I do is make these tiny little crab donuts with a bit of paprika and stuff in there and then sort of just slice the top half to opens up and then stuff that with like a chilled white meat based crab salad um so you've got really intense slightly warming uh that spongy donut you know the paprika is a bit of a smoky heat running through there and then you've got this really fresh crab salad on top and there's a temperature combination there's a texture combination it's it's a winner yeah um Beetroot and goat's cheese cornet. Now, beetroot, goat's cheese, again, classic flavors, not going to scare anyone. Um, what I thought of with this is I really wanted, you know, like a raspberry ripple ice cream when you're a kid. Mm -hmm. I mean, or when you're an adult. Yeah. Um, so it's a little uh, pastry cone, essentially. And I make a beetroot jam, uh, which gets piped into the bottom half. And then the yeah. top half is a whipped goat's cheese. Yeah. And you pipe that on so it looks like a little ice cream corny. Um, what I do is I like to just sprinkle a little touch of beetroot powder um, yeah. on top. And when that hits the, the goat's cheese, it starts to um, melt in a way. Um, and so it kind of starts to ripple through and then it looks like a, like a little raspberry ripple That's ice cream, cool. beetroot and goat's cheese. People just walk around with tiny ice cream. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Uh, apart from some very disappointed children, potentially. Like, oh, look, mini ice cream. What have you done here, mate? <laughs> Why is it salty? Um, <laughs> uh, there's there's a lot of stuff that, you know, especially in this country, we've got some amazing produce and amazing food. So British is is, an, is a good place to go. But having said that, um, like stuff from the Americas, I find, um, is not really popular Um on menus that I see, but people love the food. Yeah. Um, and so in that vein, uh, there's a little tartlet, uh, which is some charred sweet corn mixed through with a little tomato salsa. Uh, I top that with a chipotle mayo, so it's like a dried smoked mm. chili. Um, and then popcorn, a little piece of popcorn on top. So it gives you a different texture. The popcorn, you can you can cook it in whatever you like. So bacon and thyme popcorn, if you, if you want to make this at home, is an absolute winner. Um, but yeah, mustard popcorn, cheese popcorn, anything you like. Um, so with this, it's just popcorn and then lay it out on a sheet and I just sprinkle a tiniest bit of um, cheese over the top, which just starts to melt. But, so it's not like runny cheese, but it's not crisp either. And you sit that on top, finish that tart off. Um, speaking of cheese and tarts, um, there's a smoked bacon pea and chive tart, but set in a Parmesan custard. Now you say Parmesan custard and it seems crazy. Um, it's just because it's a, essentially a Parmesan cream that sets okay. um, uh, in a way. Uh, and then summertime, uh, another one like I, I wrote last week, I think, is a, um, a skewer and it's basically jerk chicken. It's that really hot, spice infused, slightly sweet um, jerk chicken. And then uh, some cubed pineapple but it is glazed in a rum caramel. So you've got, it's not, it's a little sweet, but very, very tart with the pineapple. And then you get that boozy hit and all of that stands up to the, the intensity of the, of the jerk chicken. That's a, that's a bit of a winner. They sound great, Mike. And you know, as you're chatting about them, I, I can imagine um, during that drinks and canapé reception when bride and groom are being dragged off by the photographer and having loads of photos and people are just kind of like in crowds together, getting to know each other as that food's coming around and you're seeing things like popcorn and jerk chicken and all that and mini ice creams that don't taste like ice cream. Um, <laughs> it just gets people chatting, doesn't it? And yeah, I think they're really great ways to break the ice and it shows that, um, that the canopy reception can be an interesting, fun place 
it's the place where you can start bringing like, oh, what's the food going to be like? And then I think when you're having canapes like that, you think, what on earth are we going to have for our wedding breakfast? And you're starting to get like build up that appetite and it's wetting people's appetite, getting people interested, getting people talking about food. So when they go and take their seats, you know, they're in a really good place to start enjoying it. And I mean, so, so for me that they, they are a, a, a completely necessary part of, of that meet and greet. You've got a lot of yes. people, you know, most of whom won't know each other or yes. won't know each other that well, two different sides of families, what have you. And, and you just need something to make them go, Ooh, what's this? I don't know. I'll just have one of those. That's great. Or whatever. Yeah. Any, any icebreaker that you can throw out at a wedding because that helps sort of lubricate the experience. And it, what it also avoids is someone going, do you know what, actually I'm a bit shy or whatever. So I'm just going to bang yeah. four glasses of Prosecco down me and then I'm <laughs> ruined. Um, you know, the, the bride's not going to be happy unless it's the bride. Um, and, and I think, and you're right. Yeah. It, it gets people excited. It's a bit of a view to, Oh, wow what are we going to have and for yeah. me as a chef personally if i'm sending out that like, crowd pleasing and everything are fantastic they're crowd pleasers that's the point mm -hmm. but if i'm sending out wave after wave of canapes for reception i in my head i am imagining someone a, a board coming past and someone going oh what's that yeah and just yeah. immediately you've got their attention and that's that's what does it for me as a chef yeah you get to eat some amazing food and i have this little tiny imagination i suppose of going they're really excited by seeing that and then they yeah. dig it. That's all I need. It's almost like the food plays a small role in the entertainment in a way, doesn't it? Yeah. Like especially when people go, oh, what's that? And then and little groups gather together and you kind of like huddle around one of our hosts who go, oh, we're kind of like taking the food around. Who then gets mobbed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for those, Mike. Um, so next question we've got is from Beth. Um, Beth is getting married um, next autumn, so autumn twenty twenty one and um i remember chatting to beth and she was saying she's kind of like just wants to race through the the main wedding breakfast just get to desserts because she's like a self-confessed chocoholic and so she, she like we were just chatting about the different dishes that she could have and then she lit up when we were talking about desserts um so she was saying is there any kind of like sweet canapes that she could have during her drinks reception um there are plenty um it's a nice it's something that we don't see a huge you don't see it often do you? um uh, and understandably i think if people are gonna they they build don't they through the savory into the yeah. sweet um but i think a little sweet depending on what it is can work really well at the start um and especially depending on how if you're having a, a cocktail receptions or something as well actually you can pair those together mm -hmm. um so i'll probably start with I imagine what is probably one of our most popular and most famous desserts that we do. Uh, and you'll know from our wedding shows and, and everything like that, which is a little dark chocolate tart and orange crisp. Oh yeah. Simple, effective. There's yeah. nobody that's ever eaten it that hasn't loved it. True. Um, the bitter orange gives you the crunch as well from the crisp and it's yeah. really nice, soft, rich, intense chocolate ganache in there. I mean, you, you can't go wrong. <laughs> Um, still on the on the chocolate vibe, uh, we do a nice, really nice milk chocolate and salt caramel tart. Mm -hmm. um, the way it sets is quite similar to like a millionaire slice, but yeah. less thickly. Um, and then just top that with a little bit of honeycomb, just for your yeah. texture and uh, and a different kind of caramel vibe. Um, you're going to need to freshen yourself up after those. Uh, so I tell you what I do like is a limoncello tart. And again, you've got that kind of booziness and mm. limoncello. You could say just have a lemon tart, but limoncello, they're, they're just not the same thing. Okay. They're based around the same thing, obviously, lemons. Yeah, yeah. But, um, if anyone's ever had a limoncello granita or a yeah. limoncello sorbet or anything, you, you know it's not just the, the same as lemon. And then just top that with some crispy raspberries. These are like, um, not like the little uh, sort of flakes that you'd buy from a, from a supermarket. These are sort of decent crispy chunks of raspberry and they just set everything anything they go on top of they set off and obviously lemon and raspberry works really really well yeah um you know middle of summer vibes you've got some amazing strawberries um yeah. so i'm thinking like a little toasted brioche topped with a vanilla cheesecake and then a strawberry salsa Ooh. you know you've got your 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 texture there you've got really nice strawberries and then the vanilla just sits as a platform i mean there is a reason why strawberries and cream is so popular in this yeah. country it's um, great to, play, to find those combinations isn't it putting together like that yeah especially when they're in season yeah 
Precisely, yeah. And when they're in season, I mean, we have some of the best produce in the world yeah. when it's in season, strawberries being one of those. Yeah. Um, and then, so a uh, thing I was working on a few months back, um, obviously we're caviar and chips. Uh, and I thought about doing a sweet caviar and chip. This is a little more intense. Um, so it's essentially like a little finger of Genoise sponge layered with passion fruit mousse. So it looks like a chip. And then on top is a cocoa caviar. So you essentially spherify um, uh, a cocoa gel, if you will. It turns okay. into little tiny balls. And then you put that on there. So it looks like caviar on top of the chip, but it's that's chocolate cool. and passion fruit. And uh, yeah, to me, that's an absolute win. <laughs> we need to get those on someone's menu, don't we? Mm -hmm. Maybe Beth will let us put on her wedding menu. Well, hopefully now, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for those, Mike. They're really cool. Um, Okay, so next question then, we'll quickly move on. Uh, we've got from Lucy. Um, Lucy is getting married at winter this year, so like December time. And um, essentially she was saying she just loves mini food. Like whenever she sees food done tiny. So she was saying things like a mini fish and chips, classic, uh, mini sausage and mash. Um, and then she was wondering, like, do you have any ideas about how she could get quite playful and creative with mini foods? Yeah, of course. Um... So there is, there's a way of doing just mini food. If you wanted yeah. like mini burgers or sliders, for example, um, and and there are there are ways to do that. You can have a simple mini cheeseburger, a little tomato relish, or something. And you're good to go. Uh, sliders, for example, I really enjoy. Do like a house sausage. Um, so it's like maple cured gammon minced uh, and a beef mince with a like barbecue secret mix uh, that goes in and wrap the whole thing in pancetta and then smoke it and you slice that and then you can put that with little pickled veg barbecue sauce whatever so it doesn't just have to be your standard cheeseburger you can do whatever you like yeah. um fish and chips you've got some options you can either do uh so there's a canapé that uh, we do which is um almost like a little cube of cod breaded mm. and then it's a skewer but we top with a blob of um tartar sauce and then with some matchstick fries so essentially in a one bite skewer you've got fish and chips yeah. um which is nice and it's playful uh, yeah. and it's one it won't look anything like fish and chips really so when people eat it they're like oh my god it's the texture and the flavor of fish and yeah. chips um, one one or of course you can do a mini fish and chips in a cone so you can have some little triple cooked chips and either uh you can either do it with white bait or breaded fish goujons or beer battered fish mm. little tartar sauce over the top and a, a little fork they get to eat it with absolutely fine um toad in the hole i like the idea of mm. uh, i've written that a few times um like a little mini toad in the hole um topped with just a little onion jam just loosened happy days um then i was thinking about breakfast okay yeah uh, and considering where we are with the wave of of smashed avocado and and eggs um in the world we live in these days uh like a little round of toasted sourdough with some uh sort of lightly smashed avocado lightly smashed is that a thing yeah. um avocado on top uh, a little chili a little spring onion and then topped with just a little fried uh quail's egg oh cool and as a canapé that's you can just throw that all in one that rich yeah. goat is going to come out and dress the whole thing um i think that's quite a nice breakfast take yeah that's um, cool. there's one that uh i've i've done as a sort of take on a sandwich with the croque monsieur Mm -hmm. um but it's like little small toasty version uh and they're they're really nice and you've got that cheesy bechamel sauce running through in the ham and again if you wanted to turn it into a madame you could always bang a uh, a little fried quail egg on top might be a bit mm -hmm. larger um and then one of one of our sort of crowd pleasers is uh the, like you said earlier i think the mini shepherd's pies oh yeah um they're always a win uh, and they're good for, like you say, if uh, if you're if it's sort of more wintry, mm. um, then really hearty and they're warm as yeah. well. Um, really nice, nice mix uh, of that lamb, and then uh, some some nice intense buttery, creamy mash on the top, glazed, and uh, and that's that's a winner for anybody really. Tiny pie, can't go wrong with that. Tiny pie, <laughs> especially with a northern accent. Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, thanks, Mike. So, Emily uh, is our last question. So, um, Emily was saying um, 
and, and this is nice to hear, you know, she was looking through our Instagram and saw loads of photos of um, different canapes and she was like, I'm not sure what to have. Uh, make Mike come up with five different canapes for me. Um, so pretty much in your hands, like, what would you come up with if it was just completely down to you, Mike? I mean, I'd have to go what pretty much based on what I would I would love to see come out on a board in front of me. Yeah. Um, so one easy one, steak and chips. Okay. All right. Love steak and chips, but this is um, essentially uh, rare uh, steak and then shallot jam on the top, matchstick fries. Job done. You got steak and chips in one mouthful. Brilliant. Beautiful thing. Um, Fairly similar to an arancini, but it's mac and cheese balls, but lobster flavoured. Yeah, so there's lobster going through that sauce, and then you've still got that stringy, cheesy mac and cheese inside those breadcrumbs. I'd, I'd have mac and cheese. On. I mean, put them together, you've got surf and turf, <laughs> canapes, all the way through. Um, there is a take on uh, chicken Kiev, which I like, and I've mentioned uh, a few times before. Uh, it's chicken and chorizo Kiev. Uh, people think, well, how the hell do you do that as a canapé? Um, essentially, you you bat your chicken out and, and make a um, a ball of uh, chorizo butter, chorizo okay. and herb butter, um, and you wrap a piece of chicken around it into a ball shape and then deep fry it. You've not got that garlic breath to deal with, um, especially at a wedding. Um, but that smoky heat, chicken and chorizo for me, one of my favourite combos. It's just a win. Um, veggie. There's a, a, a newish idea of mine that I really like, um, which is a paneer masala. So I love paneer. If I, if I get a curry, sagaloo, no. Sag, no. Paneer, that's the one. That's the one I'm having okay, as a too. side. Um, and so marinate that in like a masala paste. Um, so yeah. it's still mild. It's not going to blow, blow your head off. It's not going to offend anyone. Um, but then uh, just need some, uh, something to cut through that. So I make like an Indian spiced pickling liquor. Um, so you've got like your fenugreek running through there, your cardamom, stuff like that. So it's not just, you know, your, your white wine, uh, vinegar and sugar and salt. Um, and then basically you sit that all atop uh, a mini, you know, you get those mini poppadoms. Yeah. We do poppadoms uh, and a little blob of raita, so cucumber yogurt. That is a great mouthful of Indian great cuisine. Great textures as well. Yeah, really good textures. Um, yeah, I'm excited by that. And finally, mm. the caviar and chip. <laughs> it is and and thing is yeah fine it's it's the name of our company and it's our signature canapé but actually the base of it is a canapé so much more it's it is the personification of you know essentially the nation's favorite mm -hmm. the chip yeah. uh, we do them incredibly well these strip mm -hmm. cooked chips they're they're beautiful they're incredibly crisp like glass on the outside yeah. light and fluffy on the inside the beautiful thing um topped with some some really nice quality caviar yeah. Uh, and it and it helps season the chip as uh, as you're eating it. Um, yeah, that's a what great a one. We're right on brand as well. Right on brand. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for those, Mike. Um, so you're be my top five. Yeah, no, that's really good. And you know, throughout all those like six different questions, there you must have come up with. Oh, gosh, I lost count, but there's a good another twenty or thirty canopy ideas in there as well. On top of what we did, um, what, on top of what you wrote about last week. So, um, and, and, and I mean, on top of last week and this week, there's, there's probably another 300 that I could, I mean, yes, I'm getting yeah. hungry because I was talking about them to be fair. <laughs> so, um, Mike, thank you for, um, answering all of those questions and hopefully no they're Thanks really helpful. Asking. Yeah, no, really good. Hopefully they're really helpful and inspire a lot of people who are thinking about their wedding menus and uh, what they're going to be having, uh, for their drinks and canopy reception. Um, Mike, next week we're, we've got a blog coming out around summer dishes, haven't we, for wedding breakfasts and events. Excited. Um, yeah, we're starting to hit that time of year uh, where we've got long summer days and we've got some great produce, as you said earlier, coming through. And again, this country just keeps on chucking out new and different ingredients through different seasons, doesn't it? So, And mm -hmm. I think you've said before, like, summer is one of your favourite seasons, isn't it? Cooking? It is my favourite season to cook, yeah. to eat. It's fantastic. So we're really looking forward to what kind of menus you come up with. And um, I think that's looking, something to look forward to, to next week. And then, of course, you know, we'll, we'll get some questions uh, on the back of that and we'll do another one of these recordings. And, um, yeah, it'll be really good to see what comes together. Good, me um, too. As ever, you know, 
we're only a, a call an email away um, and we love receiving questions and um, Mike definitely loves getting carried away and putting the menus together <laughs> um, so do do definitely come up with the most challenging questions that you can and uh, test his creative uh, culinary skills and um, in the meantime everyone take care look after each other and uh, we'll see you soon thanks very much Mike Stay safe, everyone. Thanks, Mark. Cheers, buddy. Bye. Cheers. Bye.